Okay, we're getting ready to analyze our data for AP Bio Lab Investigation 11 Transpiration. This is my period three class. Say hi. Okay, so on your lab map, I made a couple of changes that I want to just draw your attention to. You, oh, I'm a highlighter. Um, on your... Pointer. Gotta take my glasses off. My pointer yet? Okay, good. Okay. Um, driving questions should be great. Your background should be great. Hypothesis, we've talked about that. Go away. Okay. Um, on, go down to your data table. First data table I want to talk to you about is your table one, your number of stomata. So you have field one, field two, field three, you're gonna get an average. What else could I have said there? Mean. mean, I could have. And then the number I want right here is the number of stomata per what? Centimeters Centimeter squared. Square. So I wanna review because I had like two or three different teams come and ask me for help on this, so I wanna make sure you understand it. All right, so on this first one, let me make this a little bit bigger, okay? Um, so when the part you use the ruler for, remember they're scanning low power and high power. So you used your ruler to measure the diameter under low power because we can't use a ruler to measure the diameter on what? High power. You want, we don't have anything to measure it, okay? So you did it on low power. So however, however many millimeters you got there. How many of you got that already? Raise your hand if your team has already measured that. Okay, a lot of you have. What is what, about what are you getting? Okay. Now, if you haven't done it yet, do it, okay? Because you, I want you to understand how to do that. But let's say you got 1.4 millimeters. I want you, because we want to talk about it in centimeters, how can we convert this to centimeters? So what's our answer? Yeah, 0 0.14 centimeters. Do you agree with that? All right. Look up here, don't look at your data, just look up here so we can quickly move through this. Now, you know from looking, when you're calculating the magnification, you have to use both the objective lens and the, yeah, ocular lens, good. And so you, you multiply that together. All the eye pieces are what? 10. 10. And then the objective on low power is what? 10, so 10 times 10 is? 100, so that's its magnification. High power is 40, so 10 times 40 is 400, okay? So now, here is your equation. You're trying to find out the high power field of view. So that's your x in the equation, is your high power field of view. You divide it by your low power field of view, right here, in how many? Centimeters, so what did we calculate that to be? 0 0.14 what? Centimeters. Then that's going to be equal to the low power magnification. What's that? 100 over the what? 400. High power magnification of 400. What's 100 divided by 400? 0.25. Yeah, point what? 0.25. Good. So now we're x over 0.14 equals point what? 25. So basically, we're going to take 25%, right? of the low power, low power diameter is gonna be equal to the high power di diameter. Do you agree with that? Once you have that number, okay, that's what you were solving for right here, your high power field of view in centimeters. But that is only all the way across, right? So high power, you see 25%, your field of view is 25% of low power, yes? But I need to get the whole area of what that represents. So I need to do that, I need pi r squared. So what's r? r I need to solve for the radius. So the radius is half of the diameter. So I take that number, divide it by two. Then to find that area, I take pi, what's pi? 3.14 times whatever that radius is squared. That will then give me, when I was looking underneath the microscope and I was counting up that stomata, I was counting it up in a very tiny area. I want to know what would it be 
how many stomata would I have if I was looking at the number of stomata per centimeter squared? So that's going to be what? More or less than what I was looking at? More. Quite a bit more. Then that's the way we can compare. If you can't made other counts, you'd say, well, what, how many stomata do you have per centimeter squared? I have this many stomata per centimeter. Okay, do you understand that? All right. So that's what you're doing there on that portion of it. Talk to your bio buddies. See if they're in the Shadowlands or Sunshine. With the help of Johnny Boo, with the help of Johnny Boo, I was able to calculate. All right. Okay. Next. All right. So you. You have your variable, you took weight, 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 and then you're gonna take your or mass today, right? Yeah. Okay, so you're gonna take the, di the change between day four and day one. Now, if you take your day four mass, is it gonna be more or less than your day one mass? Should be less. Should be less, why? Yeah, you lost water over time, right? Now, I know that you lost water, we are reporting it as lost water. So if I took the water out of the plant and I was holding it in my hand, right, I want to know the mass of how much is out there. You could report it as a positive value because we lost this much of it. Yes, you took the difference in the mass of the plant, but report it as a positive value unless it gained weight and then you would report it as a negative. negative. Otherwise, report that, that change that you have as a positive value, whatever that is. Okay? And we are assuming one gram, one gram in change is equal to one milliliter of water. Now I need to know the mass of all the leaves. Okay? So why do we need to know the mass of all the leaves? Because we want to what? We want to compare amongst all of us, right? We have to make it unit, we have to make it comparable. So I, what you're gonna do is you're gonna cut when you're done, cut all your leaves off. Don't get, you have petiole, because it's a dicot. I can tell by the venation, okay? You are gonna, you're gonna cut the leaves. If it is a completely dead leaf, or a really tiny leaf, are you gonna count it as, and you're gonna have to make a judgment call on that, okay? Whether or not it contributed. Now, those of you that are in the light, for some of you, one of you over there, you're fine in the light. The other one is beat down. <laughs> So look at the leaves that are contributing. If it's just shriveled down as living under those conditions, still count it in your mass, right? Definitely count it in your mass. It's just shriveled over time, right? So mass all of your leaves, you're gonna have that in grams, and then all you're gonna do is take this number, which is positive, and this number, which is positive, and you're gonna do milliliters of water over grams, and this is the number you're gonna report on our core share data. You got that, okay? And you're gonna do that for your control as well, and talk to your group about that. This is gonna, these numbers right here, that's going to come from the core share document. And I'll explain that in just a minute. Just keep in mind, this is the adjusted right here. This is adjusted, and I'll explain that in just a minute. What? Do I, oh, thank you. Okay. Now, um, un momento, por favor. Okay. So now I want you to go down here. Um, I have that you're going to do your environmental variables on the bottom and your milliliters of, wa of water loss. And I, I changed the y-axis. It's just amount of water loss per gram. Mil I, so it's not adjusted. It's milliliter of water loss per gram, not per centimeter squared. Okay? So that part is changed. And you're going to add your standard error bars. Okay? Now, um, let's go to the course shared document. I think we can get two from here. Maybe, maybe, yes, okay. So, I 
I want to see this bigger. How do I make this bigger? I don't know. Oh, I know, I know, I know. Perfect. Okay. So take a look right here. So the different groups, they're reporting their data. What I have it doing down here below, I already put in a formula ahead of time, sorry, um, that would calculate the average. Do you see this? So that's already going to be worked out for you, the averages. And that is what you're going to graph. You're graphing on your y-axis, it's the milliliters of water loss per gram, not per centimeter squared. Okay? So just milliliters of water loss per gram. Now, do you see down below where it says adjusted variables? I'm not going to have you graph the adjusted variables. And that, here's why. Just, it's simpler for you just to, to, count, to graph the averages. But also, um, if you look um, here on the adjusted variables, do you know how I adjusted it? And why doesn't the control have an adjustment? What? No, uh, outliers would be good though. I didn't take out the outliers. I subtracted off the control. So for instance, if I see that on average, the fan lost 10 mils of water, right? But the control lost six mils of water, then what's the difference between the fan and the control? Four mils. That's the adjusted. And that's what's going on your um, data table, but I'm not having you graph that. Because you'll have some bars going up, and for the mist, you'll have a bar going down. So I didn't want to do that. Yes? So for the data table, we're putting both, but for the graph, we're putting just the amount? Just the yellow. Okay. Yeah, just the yellow. And you're going to put on there your standard error bars. Yes? So for the, for the bar graph, we're just graphing the function of the averages? Yes. Yeah, you're just doing the, the class shared averages. Now, here's the deal. You only need to calculate your standard deviation, standard error for your control and your variable. I will let you get from other people who have a different variable the other standard error bars. You know, as long as you assume that it, you know, it, it looks pretty, you know. I want you to calculate it for yours and your control. But let's say if you did miss and you didn't do light, you can get that from the people that did light. If you want to calculate it on your own, you can. Remember, your end number is going to be however many points you have in your column, right? That's your end. Right? So if we have six for miss, don't use the same N across because we might have more for miss than we do for light. Are you with me? Yeah. That would be an easy way to make a mistake. You have to look how many you have before you um, do your standard error, standard deviation, standard error calculations. Yes? So for standard error, we have to graph um, ours and for the other variables too? Or just so ours? your graph is going to look something like this, okay? Your x-axis is going to be your whatever your variable is, right? So you're going to have control. You're going to have wind, you're going to have light, and you're going to have what? Mist. Mist. So let's say your control is here. Let's say your wind is here. Let's say your light is here. And let's say your mist is here. You with me? And you're, you're plotting milliliters of water loss per what? Gram. Gram. Your standard error, when you calculate that, this could be plus or minus. You're for sure, you're going to have your control in whatever one you have. So let's say you did wind, maybe this is your standard error for wind. Then get the error bars for, from light and mist teams, okay, so that you, that you have that. Okay, and then that way you'll be able to make some comparisons. The, my fear, I, I had no problem putting in the course shared data, making another column that had a standard error. But what my fear is, is what? That people will just look at that and grab, I want them to think it through. So I'm trying to facilitate that process. Okay? Questions or concerns on how you go about doing that? All right? So task one, like as soon as you walk away from here, go over and mash your plant 
and calculate the milliliters of water loss per gram by massing your leaves and get that up here so we all have that. Then if you have any stoma issues, go take care of your stoma, stoma. make sure you have your counts for that. If you have time, I would encourage you to take a leaf that's healthy and look to see, is there more or less than on the monocots and uticots you looked at before? Just a little, you know, it's not part of the lab, but I could, all right? All right, go to work.